hi guys welcome or welcome back to my channel a little bit of everything where i talk about a little bit of everything in today's video i want to talk about she's all that and it's gender swapped remake she's all that for those who are not aware in 1999 marimax came out with the movie she's all that as part of their addition to the team rom-com genre and the movie was a huge success it made 103 million dollars at the box office and it has become a very important teen movie from the 90s so when netflix announced that it was making a remake and the remake was going to be led by tiktok star addison ray people lost their minds online i didn't care because i don't have any attachment to cheese all that i never watched the movie growing up my only recollection of it is not another teen movie so i didn't watch the movies but it's been a few months i know i'm super late and no one cares anymore about this topic but i wanted to talk about it i wanted to compare the characters and specific aspects of the movie to each other and see which one i think is better with all that being said let's get into the video so let's start with the plot uh, we have zach and paget the two most popular kids in their school they are dating Taylor and Jordan, the two other most popular kids in their school. They find out that their partners have cheated on them. Taylor cheats on Zach with a reality TV star, and Jordan cheats on Paget with a backup dancer. Both Zach and Paget end up being humiliated in front of the whole school. So they say that they can take anyone in the entire school and turn them into prom king and queen, respectively. Their friends, Dean and Alden, doubt him them make a bet with them and the bet basically says that they will pick any person in the school and second pageant are gonna have three weeks to turn that person into the prom king and queen if they fail in sex case he will have to go to the graduation naked and in pageant's case she would have to get a tattoo sack and pageant accept the bet shenanigans ensue the movie goes on um, i'm not gonna get super into detail into the plot because we will get into specifics later on but as you can see both plots are basically the same but they have one key difference something i didn't tell you in this little recap is that Paget is an influencer she's basically a beauty guru and she's known as the makeover girl so when she finds out that jordan is cheating on her the whole thing is caught on video because she was live streaming so she goes viral and she becomes a bit of a meme people start calling her bubble girl because she had a bubble on her nose and because of this she loses a bunch of followers and she loses her sponsorship that she was going to use to pay for her college so after that she makes the bed with alden with the intention of turning a random guy into the prom king and in turn somehow she would get her followers and her sponsorship back first of all there is just no way i just cannot believe that an influencer would get canceled and lose followers because they got cheated on if anything i think they would gain more followers because of it like sure people would make jokes about it but i don't see why going viral would be detrimental to a sponsorship I feel like if people found out that she made a bet with a friend to secretly change the style of a random guy in the school, that would get her canceled online for being superficial and using people for her own benefit and stuff. Not getting cheated on, you know, like that wouldn't get her canceled, but using somebody and changing them over just so that she can benefit from it when the other person didn't even know that this was happening, that would definitely get her canceled in my opinion so yeah i think this point for the plot goes to she's all that because it's just much simpler and concise and to the point and he's all that does too much with the influencer storyline moving on we have sack and paget like i said before they are the most popular kid in their schools sack has like the fourth highest gpa in the school and he's the captain of the football team well, Paget, like I said, is an influencer. I think Zach is overall a better character than Paget. First off, I think that his reasoning for making the bet is much better. He's just doing it because his ego is hurt because Taylor cheated on him. That's, that's it. He wants to get revenge on her and he wants to make her feel bad for cheating on him. So the audience isn't rooting for him because he's an asshole. 
Meanwhile, Paget has this whole problem over like paying for college, and that's why she wants to make the bet. And I don't, I don't know about you, but if I were her, I would do the bet too. So, well, I, yeah, when I was watching the movie, of course, I felt bad for Cameron and I thought it was shitty what she was doing. I was also like, I totally understand why she's doing it and I don't mind it that much, really. Also, while we're in the topic of college, let's talk about it. In she's all that, Zach has gotten accepted to multiple universities, including Yale, Harvard, and Dartmouth. But he's having trouble choosing where he wants to go and he's hiding his acceptance cards because he believes that his dad wants him to go to Dartmouth like he did. But Zach isn't really sure about that and he's struggling with all the pressure he has on him to be perfect. This is like the plot that they give him so that he can become a more sympathetic character and people can relate to him. I don't think this plot was like greatly done because Zack's dad is only in two scenes and he never states that he wants Zack to go to any specific university. In fact, when Zack confronts him about it, he seems very confused as to why Zack thinks that. So I don't think this was well developed, but I still think it's better than in Haze All That. Because in Haze All That, the topic of college seems like just a mere inconvenience. It doesn't really matter. While yes, Paget says that she needs the money from her sponsorship to go to college, uh, she also says in the opening scene that she doesn't want to go to college, and I don't know why she would want to go to college. She's already earning more money than her mother, who is a nurse. There isn't really any pressure for her to go to college. Like, yes, her mom wants her to do so, but it's not like she's pressuring her or forcing her to do so. And at the end, it doesn't even matter because she doesn't go. Something they do do in She's All That is give Paget's mom more character, but I don't think it's well done. Like I said, her mom is a nurse and she doesn't make a lot of money. And the reason why they live in the area that they do is so that Paget can go to a good school. So Paget is hiding where she lives from everyone. And they treat this like a big secret that cannot be revealed. But I don't think it works because they don't spend much time on this either. Alden lets the secret out in the middle of the hallway around a bunch of people and no one has any reaction at all. Paget then reveals it during the prom and people do react then. And they show her mom being like upset by this. But I was thinking the whole time that her mom already knew that Paget was lying. After all, her friends pick her up every day for school, but they never pick her up at the house. Like, shouldn't that tell her something? There's something going on because they're definitely picking her up somewhere else, obviously. The last point I want to touch on regarding these two characters is the popularity angle. I think both movies do a similar job of portraying this, but She's All That does it slightly better. In Zack's first scene, he's walking through the school and people are like looking at him and saying hello to him, basically treating him like a celebrity. When Taylor breaks up with him, everybody's staring at them and Lainey's brother and her friend are pretty starstruck by him. The movie portrays that he is a big deal and not only by telling us that, but also by showing us the way other characters react to him. He saw that has Paget having 1 million followers and going viral online. Cameron's sister is pretty starstruck by her and both Cameron and his friend Nisha acknowledge that she's the most popular girl in the school, but the people in her school don't really react to her popularity. You could argue that people are used to her being there, but that would also be the case for Zach. Another thing is how small her friend group is. Zach's group is pretty big, even though he's only really close to two people, those being Dean and Preston, while Paget is only ever seen with Alden and Quinn. I find that like difficult to believe. I feel like if she really was that big of a deal, she would have a bunch of people, a bunch of other popular kids hanging around her, even if she is only truly close to like one or two of them. Overall, I would say that Zack is a better character than Paget. So this point goes to she's all that. Now it's time to talk about the other protagonists, Lainey and Cameron. Both characters are basically the same. They are the outcast who is bullied, their moms are dead, they both are trying to follow on their mom's footsteps, Cameron with photography and Lonnie with painting. They have three major differences though. The first one is their relationship with their dads. Lainey is pretty close to hers 
and the movie alludes to one of the reasons why she gets bullied being her dad's job he's a pool cleaner meanwhile cameron's dad isn't in the movie because he lives in sweden for work and he just sends him and his sister money and gifts and he resents his dad because of this because he moved away after his mom's death the other thing they don't have in common is the bullying because I only feel bad for Lonnie. I kind of think Cameron deserves what he gets. He's very antagonistic and he's always talking shit to the popular kids and starting fights with them. And then when they respond, they call that bullying. While Lainey is genuinely just minding her own businesses and people attack her for no reason. In her first scene, a classmate tells her to unalive herself for no reason at all. I actually thought that Lainey and that character were friends at first and was genuinely shocked by the bullying because it was it just came out of nowhere. And the third difference is that Lainey is an actually likable character and Cameron is just not. Cameron is not likable at all. I don't like him. He's incredibly annoying and pretentious. He's the epitome of not like other guys. He, you know, he likes metal, he likes Kubrick, he likes film photography. He doesn't own a phone because apparently owning a phone in 2021 is just too mainstream for him. Um, he's only posted to social media once. He only has one friend. He doesn't want to go to college because he thinks it's a scam. And, you know, all these things would be perfectly fine. They're perfectly fine. If you like metal, you like Kubrick, and you do all the other things, that's perfectly fine. But the reason why it irritates me so much with Cameron is because he's constantly putting down people who aren't like him. Every time he gets the opportunity to make fun of Paget for liking popular music and for being girly and for being an influencer and for taking pictures of herself, he takes it and he does it and he runs with it. And it really pisses me off. He just continues to be pretentious and annoying the entire movie, even after the makeover. Lainey, in the other hand, is very likable. She's just, like I said, minding her businesses, in my opinion. She doesn't fall into the not like other girls category. She never says anything disparaging about the girls who are feminine. She isn't against being feminine, actually. She just isn't because of her mom's death. She just never had anyone to teach her about feminine stuff like makeup. And by the end of the movie, she's actually friends with one of the popular girls that is played by Gabrielle Union. So again, she doesn't hate the popular kids because they're popular and different than her. She dislikes them because they bully her, which is a huge difference from Cameron, who just hates popular things because they're popular and he thinks that's edgy and cool. He's just so annoying. I really don't like him. I don't even want to keep talking about him. So yeah. Cameron and Lainey are basically the same character, but they're completely different, and this point goes for she's all that as well. Moving on to Taylor and Jordan. In theory, they're the same character. In practice, they are very, very different. The only thing they truly have in common is that they're both the protagonist's ex, and they cheat on them, and they are popular, and that's it. Taylor is a more important character overall, and she's kind of tragic to me. Like, the entire time I was watching the movie, I was thinking, how old is Brock, the guy she cheats on Zack with? Because I was like, we're watching a teenager get used and thrown out by a dude that is, at the very least, 22 years old. And that's comedy. That's, that's funny. That's kind of messed up, if you think about it. In the movie, Taylor is actively trying to get back together with Zack after Brock breaks up with her and she's actively going against Lainey. And I think that she's more interesting given that she has a backstory that is basically her mom and aunt and sister were prom queens and that's why she wants to be a prom queen. It doesn't really get deeper than that because let's be honest, she's just a one note mean girl but at least it gives her purpose and she exists for a reason other than just so that she can cheat on Zack and so that he can have purpose. And she's actively trying to become prom queen. It's not something that just happens with no effort. My point is Taylor is an active participant of the events in the movie while Jordan is just there. He's not that important to the plot other than having to cheat on Paget, and he doesn't do much unlike Taylor. He never tries to get back together with Paget. you know, he just like cheats on her and moves on with his life and he ends up dating Alden, Paget's friend, while in Cheese All That, Taylor is actually working with Dean 
to separate Lainey and Zach. One thing I do think it's done better in He's All That is the argument between Jordan and Cameron at the party. Jordan tries to sleep with Cameron's little sister, which results in them fighting. In She's All That, Taylor attacks Lainey out of nowhere and for no reason. This is like the first interaction that they have in the entire movie, and it's kind of weird. She just sees her in the crowd and goes to insult her and throws her drink at her, and I don't really like that because, like I said, they had never interacted in the movie up to this point. So I'm going to give a point to cheese all that because I think Taylor is overall a more interesting character, and I will give he's all that half a point because an aspect of Jordan's character I think is better than Taylor's. Moving on, we have Alden and Dean. They are both the best friend who turns enemy of the protagonist, and they both start and end the bet. Much like Taylor and Jordan, while they're technically the same character, they are used differently in the movies. Dean is actively trying to win the bet from the very beginning. He first invites all of their friends to the beach when he knows that Lady and Zack will be there. But after he has an argument with Zack in the locker room and he expresses jealousy about Zack and his popularity, he starts to seek out Lainey and tries to date her. He takes her to the prom after he tells her the truth about the bet and he tries to sleep with her. Much like Taylor, he's an active participant of the things that are happening in the movie. In contrast, much like Jordan, Alden is just there. We can tell that she doesn't like Paget from the very beginning and she's jealous of her popularity and that's pretty much it with her. Something I really dislike is how she only talks to Cameron once in the entire movie and that's when she tells him the truth about the bet. Unlike Dean, she's not actively trying to win, she's just there hoping that Paget loses and then eventually she tells Cameron the truth. She does end up with Paget's ex but I don't care about that because he's not important to the movie. Of course it hurt her that her best friend, quote unquote best friend, is now dating her ex, but I don't really care as a viewer. They should keep that part of the plot the same with Alden trying to win the bet by separating Cameron and Paget. So yeah, this point goes to she's all that because I think Dean is a better character. Now, Briston and Queen. They are the protagonist's best friend. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Not Another Teen Movie, but the description of the character of Preston is pretty on point. Hey Malik, will you hold these books here for a minute? Sure, why not? I am the token black guy. I'm just supposed to smile, stay out of the conversation, and say things like, damn, shit, and that is whack. Preston is just there. He makes side comments every once in a while. He's not portrayed as being particularly close to Zack, and he's really unimportant to the plot other than the fact that he throws the party in which Lainey, you know, debuts her new look, but that's about it. In the other hand, Queen is portrayed as actually being Paget's friend. From the very beginning, they seem more close than Paget and Alden. She's also not super important to the plot, even though she does help Alden pick Cameron. But at least she gets more screen time and a story of her own, which is her relationship with Nisha. And her relationship with Paget, again, like I said, is portrayed as to be very close. So we have a few moments between the two of them that are really cute. So I'm going to give the point to He's All That because Queen is actually a character with a personality and thoughts and opinions in a life of her own. And Preston is just there to make side comments and be slightly funny. That's it. Jesse and Nisha, they are the best friends of Lainey and Cameron. They are pretty much the same. They both encourage their friend to go out with Zack and Paget. I think Jesse has more of a role in the movie with him being the person that tells Zack that Dean is trying to sleep with Lainey, which is something that doesn't exist. It's a plot that does not exist in He's All That. But Nisha also has her own little storyline of being with Quinn, so I'm gonna give a point to both movies because both characters are the same and they're developed to the same level, at least in my opinion. Bryn is Cameron's sister and she's two characters in one. The first one is Simon, who is Lainey's brother, and Mackenzie, who is Zack's sister. She is Kenzie in the sense that she helps Paget get close to Cameron, and she is Simon in the sense that she's pretty starstruck by Paget, but when the truth comes out about the bed, she drops her and stands by her brother. 
there really isn't much to say about this character, but I will give the point to his all that because making both characters into one gives Brynn more screen time and more development as a person. Like we actually see how the death of her mom affected her and her relationship with Cameron and I thought that was cool because it's definitely something that it's not touch upon on She's All That at all. So yeah, the point goes to He's All That. The last point I want to touch on is the relationship between the main characters. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of the relationships. In She Saw That, we see that Lainey doesn't want anything to do with Zack because he's popular. So he lies about being into art and goes to one of her performances where he ends up performing as well. After this, they go to the beach together to his favorite spot, but his friends show up and announce and then the makeover happens they go to Princeton's house to a party they talk about themselves in her house she talks about her mom he talks about the stress of having to pick a university she finds out about the bed then after the prom is over they go to her house he apologizes she forgives him he tells her he's thinking of going to art school like her and then we have the graduation and the movie ends in his all that, much like Lainey, Cameron doesn't want anything to do with Paget, but she finds out that he likes horses, so she asks him to give her a horse riding lesson. After this, she invites him and Nisha to Queen's birthday party. Then they go horse riding and to the train to take pictures where they talk about their families. She invites him to Alden's birthday party, and this is where the makeover happens. Then he invites her to his house, to the room where he processes his photos. He finds out about the bed. The prom happens, she apologizes, they get together, and then we fast forward and we see that they have decided to become travel bloggers and that's the end of the movie. As you can see, both developed in pretty much the same way, but I think She Saw That does it better because they make both characters step out of their comfort zone in order to be in a relationship and has them meeting halfway, kind of. Like, Lainey would have never become popular and gotten a makeover if it wasn't for Zack. And similarly, if it wasn't for Lainey, Zack would have never tried performance art and decided to go to art school. So they both have done things that they normally wouldn't have in order to make this relationship work. Whereas in He's All That, I feel like the only person having to change is Cameron. Yes, it's true that Paget has never ridden a horse before, but it's not like she's against riding horses or she's afraid of riding horses. She never rode a horse because she never did before. There isn't much of any story behind that. And with the photography thing, she takes pictures for a living. She's an influencer. Maybe they should have focused more on his music taste, like having her go with him to a metal concert from a local band or go with him to watch an indie film or something. Things that Paget wouldn't do if it wasn't because she needed to get close to him. Because like I said, as it is, he's the only one who has to change in order to fit into her life. Well, she doesn't really have to do much to fit into his. Another thing is that the movie paints Cameron having feelings for Paget way too fast. Like, they hang out one time, which is when he teaches her to ride the horse, and then she invites him to Quinn's party, and he immediately shows that he has romantic feelings for her. While in She's All That, I think Lonnie doesn't really show obvious romantic feelings for Zack until, like, after Preston's party. Earlier, she's, like, intrigued by him, but it's not obvious until after the party where she gets upset because he doesn't kiss her. And I think that makes more sense because she's supposed to be an outcast that is bullied by his friends. So there is really no reason why she would like him until she actually gets to meet him. So because of this, I'm going to give the point to cheese all that. So our final results are 3.5 points for he's all that and 6 points for she's all that. To be honest, I don't think that She's All That is a much better movie than He's All That. I think they're both okay. They're both entertaining. They both do their jobs as a teen movie with a silly plot. Both movies feel overly long and they aren't that funny. And they should spend more time on showing the protagonist's relationship than they already do. Both have their issues. I personally wouldn't be against watching either movie again. I think they're both fine, but I do think that She's All That is overall better executed than he's all that so that was all for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed it let me know if you agree with my analysis of the movie and which one is your favorite don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye